Hi there, here's a quick video looking at quasi or quasi public goods. So quasi public goods are sometimes called non-pure or near public goods. And the key point is they have at least uh, some of the characteristics of a pure public good, but under certain circumstances, they can take the, uh, the characteristics of a private good. In other words, they either become excludable and or rival. So let's look at the two, uh, two characteristics here. Quasi-public goods are semi-non-rival. If you think about an empty beach, an empty road, uh, a Wi-Fi network, which very few people are using, it's essentially non-rival. If I join the road, it doesn't change anybody else's speed and doesn't really affect anybody else. Likewise, if I take, take my dog for a walk in a public park, it doesn't really affect anybody else's enjoyment if it's uh, pretty, pretty empty. However, as beaches and roads and motorways and parks get congested, as people, more people join, for example, a Wi-Fi network, you start to see the rival nature of consumption. And with a Wi-Fi network, for example, uh, the speed falls, okay, and uh, the sort of download times increase, and people's disutility is, is, is increasing, where utility from using the network starts to fall. So beyond a certain point at congested times, at peak demand times, quasi-public goods become semi-rival. Another characteristic of quasi or near public goods is they become semi non excludable. So, for example, there might be some limitations on who can use a beach or what types of uh, transport can use a motorway uh, or uh, what type of people can use uh, a park, for example. So, it's possible for a uh, what is essentially a public good to become semi non excludable. Okay, so most public goods are best described as non pure public goods or quasi public goods. But keep in mind, please, that the existence of both pure and non-pure quasi-public goods still remains a potential market failure because in a free market, they'll be under-provided or not provided at all. And that can lead to a misallocation of scarce resources because not enough land, labour and capital is being devoted to providing public goods. Last revision point, please don't confuse public goods with public services. So public service could be something like education and health or local authority services, libraries, for example. Those are not public goods. In fact, they're better off being described in many ways as merit goods. OK, quick revision there on quasi or non-pure public goods.